Here we're going to talk about roots, uh, continue the discussion on roots, and where we're going to talk about simplifying roots. So if you haven't watched the first video on roots, you need to do that. What I've written on the board are some roots that you should have memorized. And uh, one thing that is vitally important is that you have the multiplication tables memorized from 1 to 10. So, you know, 3 times 6, 5 times 9, 7 times 8, all of those multiplication tables from 1 to 10, you really need to have those memorized and in your head. Um, otherwise, this is going to be pretty complicated because you, you really need to be able to recognize um, the roots of certain numbers and the way you do that is because you know your multiplication tables of 1 through 10. So the roots that I've written on the board here, I'd like you to copy these down. These are roots that you should have memorized. The square root of 4 is 2 because 2 times 2 is 4. The cubed root of 8 is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Square root of 9 is 3. Cubed root of 27 is 3. And then you should know the square roots for 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So square root is 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. You should be able to instantly recognize when you see the cubed root of 64, you know that that is 8 because you know that 8 times 8 is 64, etc. These are roots that I would highly suggest that you have memorized and your life is going to look is going to be a lot easier. Um, but these all relate to the multiplication tables, right? The, the reason that the square root of 36 is 6 is because 6 times 6 is 36. So if you know that easily in your head, you'll recognize this um, a lot quicker. So what we're going to talk about here is simplifying roots. And so we're going to start out with a simple example. So let's say we're going to use 36. Now you should know that the square root of 36 is 6. But I'm going to use this as an example uh, to show you how you can simplify roots that you don't know off, offhand. So when you look at, at 36, you know in your head that you know that 4 times 9 is 36 and that you know that the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 9 is 3. So when you look at uh, a number under a square root, you should try to think about what roots do you know immediately. Square root of 4 and the square root of 9 and you know that 4 times 9 is 36. So if you have, for example, the equation is square root of 4 times the square root of 9, you can combine them and just say 4 times 9 is going to be the square root of 36. So working backwards, if you have the square root of 36, but let's say you don't know this offhand, but you know that 4 times 9 equals 36, and you know that the square root of 4 is 2, and you know that the square root of 9 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. So we started out with 36. We broke it down into square root of 4 times the square root of 9, which we know the square root of 4 is 2, times the square root of 9 is 3. 2 times 3 equals 6. So we know the square root of 36 is 6. Where we would use this is maybe in an example where you don't know offhand. See the square root of 144. I have a video on divisibility um, that you you should watch if you can't figure out how to um, how to know what numbers would be divisible into 144. But if you know that hey four is divisible into 144, we can break this down into 4 times 4 into 144 is 36. So we know 4 times 36 is going to give us 144. 
So instead of trying to figure out the square root of 144, we're going to break it down into 4 and 36. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 36 is 6. So the answer is the square root of 144 is 12. So one of the key components is here we're, we're going backwards where we're breaking this down into two factors whose square roots we know. So the point here too is, as I said before, if you're given what's the square root of 4, of 4 times the square root of 36, you can combine these 4 times 36 and the answer is the square root of 144, which is 12. This is the same if we're dividing. We can also combine, let's say we had the square root of 21 divided by the square root of 3. Well, we don't know what the square root of 21 is. We don't know what the square root of 3 is. To simplify that, you can, be because it's division, you can do the square root of 21 divided by 3, which is the square root of 7. 21 divided by 3 is 7. So you can combine these into one square root sign. So with multiplication and division, you can always combine, combine the numbers and put, the, put it under the square root sign. Now we still don't know what the square root of 7 is. That's as simple as we can get it. But the answer on the test might look just like this, the square root of 7. That's as simplified as we can get it without punching it in, into our calculator and getting an answer. So multiplication, division, you can combine the terms under the radical sign and do the math. You can't necessarily do that with addition. So we can't say, let's say we had square root of 2 plus the square root of 5. This does not equal the square root of 7. You can't add two numbers under the square root sign and get this. This is not right. So don't do it with addition or subtraction, only multiplication and division. However, I will say this. That's if these two numbers are the same, you can combine them in a different manner though. So remember, if these two are different, you're adding and subtracting, you can't just add them up and get the number. You can punch this in your calculator, the square root of 2 and plus the square root of 5, it's not going to be the square root of 7. But let's say we had a problem like this. Now, here, square root of 2, square root of 2. We can somewhat combine these or simplify this, where if you have what's under the radical sign is the same number and you're doing addition or subtraction, then you can add the numbers on the outside. So 3 times the square root of 2 plus 9 times the square root of 2 is going to be the same as 3 plus 9 times the square root of 2, which equals 12 times the square root of 2. Now that's as simple as we can get it because we don't know what the square root of 2 is offhand. We'd have to plug that in our calculator. So if you're adding two numbers and they have the same number under the radical sign, you can add them. So here we just did 3 plus 9 and got 12, but we kept the square root of 2 sign. Okay, We didn't make this the square root of 4. We kept the square root of 2. You just carry that over and you just add these two. And it goes back to the distributive property. Because we have 2 times 3 plus 9, that will give us 12. I'll show you another one that would be a little bit more complicated on the test. Square root of 5 plus the square root of 125. So here we're going to use two concepts. So square root of 5, that's not one of the ones that we've automatically um, memorized. So we don't know what the square root of 5 is. It's going to be some sort of decimal number. We'd have to plug it in the calculator. 125, we don't know what that is either, but we can break it down into something that we might know. 
So now I'm just going to look at this 125, square root of 125. If we got that, we know what the square root of 25 is. If you put 25 into 125, you're going to get 5. So 25 times 5 gives you 125. So we can break that down in. The square root of 25 is something we've memorized. We know that it's 5. So, and then, so it's 5 times the square root of 5, which you write like this. You just put them beside each other. Square root of 25 is 5, and we just bring square root of 5 down. So now if we plug this in for that, we had square root of 5 plus 5 times the square root of 5. And remember, we're adding. So, and these two numbers are the same, square root of 5. There's actually a 1 out here. You don't write the 1 if, if it's out here uh, normally, but it's just understood that there's a 1 there. So 1 plus 5 would give you 6 times the square root of 5. So this lesson is, is a little bit more complicated maybe, so you might want to watch it again. But, um, but you really need to know some of the basic square roots and you need to know multiplication tables in order to be able to identify um, how to simplify these things.